I'm Rachel, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how I clean my thrifted finds. So I go thrifting um, every once in a while. Lately it's been a lot more than usual because I've gotten a new thrift store in my town that's really great. I've actually been buying clothes, which doesn't happen usually at all because, I don't know, thrift stores just, the prices seem expensive for clothes, but this store, they have 50% off all the time. So that actually makes it more affordable because usually I just buy things from like regular stores really super cheap and it's like the same price as the thrift store. So, so we will be going over um, fabrics and different kinds of fabrics because I did go to an antique store and so I'm going to kind of show you how I take care of my antique things. And then I'm also going to be showing you how I clean like baskets and glass items and metal items. I generally get mostly glass things when I go just because I get a lot of things for um, like dishware and um, I buy a lot of things for saucers for my planters. So anyways, I guess we'll just start off with clothing items. I did get two adorable cardigans the time before last time that I went. I got one that has really cute little flowers on it and then another one that's just a plain white but it's a really cute stitch. I needed a couple of nicer looking cardigans and so I was really grateful that I was able to find these. I usually find things like this at estate sales but I haven't been to estate sales for quite a few months so um, now that estate sale season is over with I'm glad that there's a little store nearby me that I can find things. With these I wash them the same way that I always wash used clothing because used clothing at the thrift store usually has a strong perfume smell and of course I don't want that in my clothing. So sometimes if it's a non-washable thing, then I will put it out in the sun so that way the sun can help air it out and clean it as well. Otherwise, I will take it and I put it in my washer and I use about a cup of baking soda. If it's really bad and there's a lot of them, then I use um, more baking soda than that. And then I also use oxygen bleach. I use the one by BioClean because it's cheaper than OxyClean and I feel like it works better, but that's just for me personally and with my water, I don't know, it could be different for you. It's just an oxygen bleach and so it's not going to ruin anything and it's really nice and safe on fabrics. If there's any kind of little stain that I see, I will try to treat it. I use a seventh generation spray stain remover. This works really good for all sorts of different kinds of things and I can even use this like for my bedspread is all white and so I can use it to spray a large area if say my dog got on there with muddy paws or something and it works really well at taking out stains. And then I also have a stain remover stick that I will use sometimes for oil stains. Usually you don't find those kinds of stains at thrift store things, but sometimes I will find um, rust stains and so the seventh generation with the OxyClean usually works for those. And then I also have this Ecover stain remover stick. This is one that I normally use for just when there's food on it thing. So we don't need to worry about that for this instance, but it is helpful for working in the stain remover spray a little bit if I feel like it needs to be worked in a little bit better. So for this big house dress that I got, I don't know, I feel like it's like the old lady in Florida sort of vibe going and it's a button down so I can put it on to wear it as like a larger apron for when I'm cleaning or something to protect a dress I have underneath. So if I don't want to change my clothes, before a party or something, but I need to do some like messy tasks <laughs> that I have this, I guess. Um, I figured this would come in handy really nicely and it has good pockets. So yeah, it's pretty darn cute, but it does have a little bit of a perfume smell. Sometimes it's just from other things that are around them, but a lot of people wear perfumes and also a lot of people use soap or fabric softener or dryer sheets that all have that residual smell and I don't like that and I don't like this stuff being in my clothes. So I work it out with the baking soda and the BioClean and it works really well. Or the OxyClean, oxygen bleach there. <laughs> so I did go to an antique store a couple weeks ago and I got this beautiful, oh my goodness, it's so pretty. This beautiful little table thing, embroidery. <laughs> What is it called? It's not really a doily. Um, I don't know. Would you call this doily? 
I thought that it would be absolutely lovely on my table next to my bed. And there is a little tiny spot on here, but overall it's still in really nice condition. So I am going to soak this with some oxygen bleach for a little while and I'm going to hand wash this because it is embroidered and I don't want this to go through the washer, but it is really nicely embroidered and there's nothing loose on it. So if I did put it in delicates in my washer in like a bag or something, it would probably be fine. But those sorts of things aren't always pre-washed so like the one that's on this table right here it wasn't pre-washed and i did have to go and put it through the washer because my husband got salsa all over it so it shrunk unfortunately i don't know why it shrunk it was all on cold the whole entire time and i air dried it but anyways that happened so that is something to be concerned of sometimes when you are washing things like this because sometimes they can shrink but that's the risk that we take when we pay two dollars for something <laughs> this one though is a little napkin I was going to use it as like a little tea towel I guess it's more like I don't know it's the size of a napkin more than a tea towel and it's so pretty it has a pretty decent sized food stain over here and it seems like the food is still kind of embedded in it I am going to be using stain remover on this of course but I'm going to use the spray stain remover all over it just in case it <laughs> sometimes that will take out so many layers of staining on one area and dinginess that then I'll have a white spot where the stain was and then the rest of it looks more antiqued and I like that with this how it looks more antique but you know I'm going to just go ahead and spray the whole thing with some of my spray cleaner just in case so that way I have an even look for this and it won't you know I won't get white stains or unstains if that makes sense I got this set of three sort of like placemats they're so pretty and I can use them other places and stuff of course but I was going to keep this in my drawer for when I have tea parties I love the little embroidery on all of these how it's just a nice light gray and it shows up but it's not in your face and so it's nice and neutral and it will go with any sort of a tablescape that I want to do pretty much and then the edging is so beautiful as well so there's three of these and I am going to be washing these in the same bag as my other one and or maybe I'll do two bags just so that way I can separate them a little bit more easily I'm not sure, but I will remove the stains from this and I want to soak this in oxygen bleach beforehand because I want to get them a little bit more of a brighter white, but I'm not going to do that for too long, only for a little while. You can soak some things for quite a few hours. I do that with my bedspread and with like my pillowcases or whatever, but for something like that, I don't want to soak it for too long. I don't think it would damage it. It's just you know if you want to you can also pre-soak these without oxygen bleach and you can let them soak for like overnight and then you can change out that water and kind of rinse them and then if the water is still not really clear and it's kind of dingy from that you just keep doing that process until it's not so dingy or it runs clear and then you can go ahead and wash it that will help bring a lot of things out and you want to use cool water or cold water Sometimes on the pre-soaking things they say to use warm water or like on the oxygen bleach they say to use the hottest water possible for like the oxygen clean bright whites. I will do that for like slip covers but I'm not going to do that for delicates like this. I will use a nice cool setting and that's why I like the BioClean is because they make their products to where they work really well in cold water. For metal things, I like this adorable little candle holder that now I can rush down my stairs when Mr. Darcy's aunt knocks at my door and comes through telling my mother how horrible her garden is and berating me for being engaged but not engaged. <laughs> so um, anyways, for these sorts of things, oh it's just so cute and I love it. But. I am going to be taking a microfiber cloth with this and I will just polish it up with some water and see how much junk I can get off of it. You can also use a fluoride toothpaste and a rag and then use that to polish it up as well. I'm, I know that there's like actual polishing things but this is just that's just how I clean stuff like this. I will use Bon Ami for really t stubborn spots on things that are metal and that seems to work really well also. And if some of the plating is off or has really discolored, you can use um, a rub and buff, of course, 
And yeah, then you have some cute little thing around your house that you can use for whatever. I mean, clearly I will be using this for a candle holder, but I buy a lot of silverware and um, different things like that. And I also like to buy a lot of brass things. I find a lot of brass containers to put plants in. And also I like to collect those little brass animals sometimes, depending on if I really think that they're adorable or not. And I find a lot of luck cleaning it with like a microfiber cloth and then sometimes with toothpaste. Otherwise I just use Bonami. I hear that Barkeeper's Friend works really well too, but I find that Bonami works great and it's non-toxic and it doesn't scratch. It's very safe on things. I use it for my actual silver silverware too um, because I'm too lazy to sit there and polish it. And I don't want to use a silver polisher that's not non-toxic. So usually I will use toothpaste, but that kind of takes a long time and Bonami takes it off right away. And then I just, you know, polish things up with a microfiber cloth too. Some of my silverware stays in my actual silverware drawer that I use on a regular basis. And then I also have silverware that I keep in a silverware box that has a polisher and stuff that I use. And you know, that's a little bit different because that's a whole set. It's not a whole set because you can't find whole sets anywhere, <laughs> like ever. But I do like a little bit of patina on some of my metalware. So I don't always clean it all the way or really at all. Sometimes I will just clean it with a little water and a cloth and then I'm good to go. Removing stickers on metal, you can take off the sticker, of course, and then use some rubbing alcohol to get the st sticker off. I hear that you can use lemon oil to get stickers off of things, but I wouldn't use lemon oil on something like this because I don't know if the lemon would be caustic enough to change the color, perhaps, or, you know, something like that. I just don't, I wouldn't want to worry about that. So, I don't use lemon oil for those sorts of things. I use rubbing alcohol. For one thing, it's a lot cheaper than lemon oil as well. And if you are tempted to use nail polish instead of rubbing alcohol, don't do it unless it's acetone free because acetone can take paint off of things. So for instance, like this, I don't think it would from this because I think it's glazed over the flowers, but just in case I wouldn't take any stickers off of this with acetone. Well, I mean, it's on the back, so that wouldn't matter, but I would use rubbing alcohol for this because it's non-toxic, whereas acetone is toxic. I guess if you breathe rubbing alcohol enough, it could be difficult for you if you're very sensitive, but for me, using a little bit of rubbing alcohol works great. Um, so I guess you could use lemon oil for this if you are really sensitive to rubbing alcohol. I'm going to be using this plate actually for a plant on it, I think. I thought that's what I was gonna do, but I've kind of fallen in love with this pattern, and so now I wanna find more and see if there's a whole china set, because I want it. It's just so cute, and I want all my dishes to be this. I finally found a cute little one-person teapot, or maybe even two people if you're only drinking one cup of tea, but now I have one, and I love it, and it's adorable and so cute, and so now my look is over. And now I'll probably actually find a whole bunch of them all the time and keep being tempted to buy them, even though I don't need any more. But such is life. It's always so obnoxious when things like this get taped over because sometimes the tape even peels the paint off. And so what I will do is soak this in warm water, like warm soapy water to help loosen up the paint and slowly peel it back and have it loosen more. And then that will get the sticker off <laughs> or the tape. Whatever remaining goop is left from the tape, I will use diluted rubbing alcohol for something like this. It takes longer, but it's worth it when I don't have to worry about any of the paint coming off possibly. Paint will come off of things that have been like spray painted sometimes or whatever. And if you want to take the paint off of something that's been spray painted, you can use acetone and that will actually work for some things. So I guess it depends on how you're wanting to clean it and what you're wanting to remove, but we're not gonna go into that that much because I only do those sorts of things when it comes to furniture for the most part. And usually I'm just gonna paint over it. So I don't mess with that for the most part. For little tins like this, sometimes, this one's not dirty in the middle, inside, but sometimes they are. And for things like this, you just put them in some warm soapy water and clean them up that way. The sticker comes right off and then it's all nice and clean and you don't have to worry about anything. Sometimes they can be rusty on the sides though, so you can 
you know, use things to help block the rust or whatever. I only buy ones that are not rusty on the inside because I actually use these. So if it was rusty on the outside, I would just remove as much as I could and then dry it right away. And then, you know, don't have it out in the rain. <laughs> so that way it won't rust anymore, hopefully. And yeah, but for the most part, I just don't buy ones that are rusty. For glass things like this, this is like the kind of glass thing that I could use a razor blade to help remove this, but something like this, I'm just going to soak it in warm soapy water. I'll probably do a whole tub of, not like a bathtub, but like a tub tub that you can put in your sink of warm soapy water. Then I'll put this and this teapot and also my plate and this in, and so that way I can help remove the stickers and sometimes when the stickers or the tape is off of it after the warm soapy water, sometimes there will be a little bit of residue left on it. I find that's the case for like glass jars from things that you buy and you want to reuse the glass jar. The labels on those, a lot of the times they can leave a little bit of residue and then you can use some rubbing alcohol or diluted rubbing alcohol on those. This is just a cute little plate that I was going to use as a saucer. I like that it's hexagonal, which is kind of cool and it has a nice lip on the side so this will work really nicely for bottom watering and also it would just be really cute for snacks so who knows sometimes you can get hard water deposits on things like this i happen to have hard water where i live kind of and sometimes i can get hard water on things and so what i do with that is i actually use bonami and it helps bring it right up and i don't really have to worry about that and then things are nice and clean i got this cute little plaster of paris jar even though i have a bunch of plaster of paris but i thought it was just so cute and I wanted to keep it in my crafting area so that way I just have a little jar so I can mix it in with some acrylic paints to do stuff with. It's just so cute and so I had to buy it. And it was only 50 cents so anyways, I bought it. <laughs> I will be removing the price tag sticker and leaving this one of course. I'm not going to be soaking this in warm water because I don't want the sticker to go off of it. So I will just use some rubbing alcohol on here on a little cotton swab once I get this all removed. So the sticker is being a little bit stubborn. And so what I do when I have these stubborn stickers is I will slowly peel back as much as I can, but when I can't get any more off of it, sometimes I will use like a razor blade really carefully. But since this is curved, I'm going to be using my plastic pampered chef scraper and use that on this to help scrape this off. And then I can use a cotton swab, soak it with rubbing alcohol and then place it over this part and that will help loosen it up and then I can finish um, scraping it off with the scraper. And then I can remove the rest of the stickiness with the cotton swab. For things that you can't really put in warm soapy water or just clean with rubbing alcohol, uh, are things like baskets or like purses or shoes or lampshades, you know, those sorts of things. For things that are like fabric, I will use a microfiber cloth and I will just dust them and clean them that way. I think the only kind of thing that I would possibly spray them with would be like rubbing alcohol. You could even probably use like a linen spray that doesn't have any colorants in it, which it shouldn't because it's a linen spray and it has alcohol in it. Um, but you can also use like vodka. You can spray it with that, like any kind of like a hard clear alcohol. You could use that to spray on those sorts of things if you're wanting to um, disinfect them. Or you can just set them out in the sun to disinfect them as well because that will kill most of the bacteria and it will help remove any kinds of smells. If it smells really bad, you could take a tub, um, like a plastic tub, and put a bunch of baking soda in it or even coffee grounds, but I would worry about the coffee grounds getting on things. And then you could set your thing in there and I would have it, depending on the kind of thing, I would have it above the baking soda so it's not actually touching it and then put the lid on it and let it set and hopefully the baking soda will help absorb any of the smells otherwise i just set it outside in the sun that's for things with fabric there's other things that you can do for things that aren't fabric of course but for like baskets or i don't know anything that's wood or whatever that can't go in warm soapy water then I will just dust it first with a microfiber cloth and then I will spray it with either a mixture of water and vinegar or a mixture of water and rubbing alcohol or I guess if I don't have rubbing alcohol on hand you could use a clear alcohol such as like vodka. So you can spray it down with that and then 
you can either set it and let it dry or you can even clean it with um, like a microfiber cloth that has some rubbing alcohol on it. I would just be careful of things that have stains on them that you want to leave the stains on like for a basket because depending on the kind of stain that can lift the stains off of it. So I usually just go the route of spraying it on, letting it set, and then if I want to clean it better, then I will use warm water with a microfiber cloth. You can also use an all-purpose cleaner on a lot of these things too, and that works really great also. That's what I'm gonna be using with this. If it's a really thin sort of a basket that I don't want to warp at all from there being water on it, then I would use a rubbing alcohol spray because then it will evaporate really quickly. So that can be really helpful for something that you want to make sure it doesn't get warped from water, whereas an all-purpose cleaner is more water-based and so it'll stay on there a lot longer and you also have to clean that off, whereas a rubbing alcohol, it just evaporates and you don't have to clean it off of it. Now, if you're going to be eating off of something, then of course you want to clean the rubbing alcohol off of it anyways, but that's what the warm soapy water comes in to play, and so it's different. <laughs> Hi, you wanna be in my video? You're so cute. What are you doing back there? You see, oh yeah, you can see her. <laughs> Hi, sweetie, come here. And that's about all I can think of to cover. If you have any questions about anything specifically that you could think of that you get from thrift stores or you might be wanting to buy from a thrif thrift store and you don't know how to clean it that I didn't cover very well, then leave it in the comment section below and I'll try to answer you the best that I know how. And if I don't know how, then I'll let you know I guess that too. And I hope you have a really great week. I will talk to you later. Bye!